Hey guys, welcome back to this course on Memories in VLSI. In the last two videos, we have seen the read and write operation of SRAM cell. In this video, we will try to understand the cell stability of SRAM cell because we understood that um, in read operation, there is something called as read stability. And also in write operation, we need some writability constraints. Together, it makes this SRAM uh, design much more complex than any other uh, cell design. So without wasting time, let's get started with the topic. First of all, to ensure writability and readability, the transistors should satisfy the ratio constraint, the ratio constraints which we talked about, the driver transistor of NMOS in the uh, uh, cross-coupled inverter, that driver's transistor has to be strong enough compared to that of the access transistor. That is to ensure that it can uh, pull it down and it will not uh, glitch the, the voltage. Okay. Also, the NMOS uh, pull down should be strongest and the access transistor should be of intermediate strength and the PMOS should be the weakest. That's how we can, uh, we have understood when we saw the read and write operation, right? And to achieve the high layout density, all the transistors should be as small as possible. Smaller they are, the better it is for our uh, integration because we can accommodate more and more cells. The air area will be less and the price will be less. So, and also SRAM cells must operate correct at, uh, correctly at all voltages and temperatures despite uh, the process variation. This is nothing but the PVT variations in all the process and corner variations. It has to work exactly fine. So those also need to be taken into consideration when we are designing and doing the layout of the SRAM cell. In case of uh, SRAMs, the cell should have two stable states uh, during the read and the hold operation. That is, uh, uh, as we understood, because they, they will have two stable states. One, uh, because there are two uh, invert, uh, inverters which are cross coupled, right? So one will have the bit and one more will have the bit part. So both the stable states should be there in read and hold operation. Hold is nothing but a node re no read or write operation is being done. In uh, hold operation, there is nothing being done. It's just uh, the data is latched in the latch and it is just holding the data. In that case uh, also and in read operation also, there should be two stable states but in case of right operation there should be one stable state because that kind of latch should be broken in case of a right operation we have understood right because we should not allow the pmos to charge the q bar up that is what we have understood from our previous discussion uh, we that's the that's how we can we can pull down one of the uh, bit or bit bar one of the bit line has to be pulled down if we want to pull down one of the bit line then we are disrupting that uh, two stable states right so in case of write operation, there should be one stable state. If it has two stable states, we will not be able to write in the uh, write operation. So uh, this is the basic that we need to understand. In case of read and hold operation, we have two stable states. In case of write operation, we will have one stable state. And the stability and the writability of the SRAM cells are quantified by three different things, three different margins, basically. The one is hold margin, one more is read margin and write margin, which are determined by something called a static noise margin of the cell in its different modes of operation. So static noise margin is uh, uh, common and this static noise margin will vary in these conditions right hold is when the data is not being read or written in that case what is the static noise margin that will be the hold margin so what is static noise margin static noise margin is the maximum noise that can be applied to two cross coupled inverters until the stable state is lost for hold or read operation, right? Or the second state is created during the write operation for an SRAM cell because these two are different. That's the reason why we are giving two different statements. In case, let's say what happens is during read or hold operation, if we put noise into that, what happens is we will lose the sta stable state. It may flip the bit. That is the possibility in case of read and hold operations. But in case of 
uh, right operation we have we we were having only one stable state we want to have one stable state in when we are writing but if um, if noise comes into picture it may create both the stable states which will not allow our uh, writing operation that's what we are trying to say in the static noise margin now let's try to understand the hold margin so this is the test circuit which we are seeing uh, to determine uh, the hold margin right in case of hold margin uh, basically the there is there is no read or write operation that is happening so the both the access transistors are turned off they are not at all in operation so this latch is there which is nothing but two cross coupled inverter but we don't have uh, you know we don't have this thing which we have introduced this thing okay we have introduced something called as a vn which is a noise source okay imagine initially this noise source is zero vn is zero okay if this is zero then two stable states are as nicely as this okay this will be this is nothing but when v1 is zero v2 is high right that, that's what happens v1 is this uh, output the output of first inverter the v2 is the output of the second inverter when v1 is zero the v2 will be high when v1 is one the uh, v2 will be zero this is the the v2 will be zero this is the curve so this corresponds to the first curve and this corresponds to the second curve uh, of these two inverters but what happens when vn is a positive value so if vn is a positive value then uh, at lower values of v1 um this this um this comes to zero right this first curve actually uh, this is v1 will be like this is shifting the value the v1 is increasing because it it is adding a voltage source these two voltage sources are added now what happens is uh, at lower values of this v1 this curve comes down which means this curve shifts left right and also this curve actually if you see uh, this this uh, value will again shift left what what does that mean this uh, this coming down also shifts left means it has to go up so what happens is this this distance is becoming smaller and smaller you uh, can see this so what is this this is actually called a static noise margin the we whatever the width of the uh, square we can fit into this um, curve two curves right so width of this square is called a static noise margin and if uh, we are going to introduce a noise here what happens is it becomes smaller and smaller the width becomes smaller because this is shifting left and this is going up what happens it becomes a much smaller one so this is how uh, static noise is uh, impacting the stable state if let's say it has become much larger okay the vn becomes much larger then this state is going to um, non existing because v1 at zero is not at all will happen because our vn is making it you know v1 will be v1 plus vn so it will it will be like uh, it will not allow this state to be there so one state is lost a stable state is lost uh, which means what it will try to flip it the bit is uh, bit will be flipped so this is about uh, the hold margin the second type of uh, margin that we wanted to understand is read margin in case of read margin in the read operation what happens is basically the bit lines will be charged to high right bit lines will be floating high initially in case of pre charge state and then in the read operation you uh, i want you to remember this because we have already learned this i am not going to explain it again so in case of read operation what happens is um, there is an access transistor and access transistor is trying to pull one of the node up so let's say q is zero that's what we assumed if the q is zero and access tra transistor is trying to um, you know uh, flow the current through that which means it is trying to pull that q up but the d the driver transistor tries to pull it down so what happens that kind of situation which is um, the access transistor trying to pull it up even though the uh, that node has to be actually at zero since that that creates a distortion in in the in this curve basically so what happens is uh, you will have almost this first curve is almost same because this is like let's say it's for the na it's for the second inverter but for the first inverter what happened is nothing but it it went up this uh, curve went up because you remember that the 
voltage at that node went up if the voltage at that node went up that means what it, it is adding noise it's the same thing it is adding noise um, even uh, externally because because of that at read operation the static noise margin is much smaller as you can see here it is much smaller than that of the static noise margin at the hold uh, uh, state and the last one is nothing but uh, the right uh, margin basically uh, before that we will also try to understand uh, what are the ways to improve uh, the read margin one way that because we need to improve the read margin right because this is not this is not looking good one way that we can increase the read margin is by increasing the beta ratio as as i told earlier if we make the driver transistor much stronger than that of the access transistor we will be making it better right so but the problem with making driver transistor much much stronger stronger means what we are making it wider making it wider making it wider uh, will occupy more and more area we have an area problem right um, this is the trade off between area and also the noise margin and one more way to uh, improve the read margin is nothing but increase the vdd or the threshold voltage we can increase the vdd power and or the threshold voltage both of which have a problem uh, the, 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 actually the vdd if we increase the vdd then the total power consumption will be high which is the power problem and if we increase the vt the performance will uh, go down it performance is nothing but speed right the speed will go down the if you increase vt it will be much lower right so these are the trade-offs that can be done so as to fine tune and get a good uh, noise margin as well and also power area and performance so i have told all the possible uh, uh, trade offs that ha ha that can we can do and get a good noise margin as well and the last one is a right margin basically when the cell is being written the access transistor a must overpower the pull up transistor p to create a single stable state that is what we have discussed before so in case in this case uh, what happens is this is how the figure will look like because we don't have two stable states we want to have one single stable state uh, if, if it is like this figure which we have seen like this can we write the uh, value that we want to write it is not possible because see if we allow the P, PMOS transistor that we have seen uh, to uh, write that value if we allow that PMOS transistor to uh, pull the node up over there we, we were trying to pull it down right through the bit bar if we are trying to pull it up if we allow it to pull it up then what happens then it will there will be two stable states like this as we just saw in that figure there will be two stable states and then we can't write right so this is what we want the only one stable state should be there and the second stable sh st stable state should not be there and we want to write uh, in that case right so that's the reason why this is the square which we are seeing if it is approaching if this uh, curve 2 is approaching curve 1 then that's bad for us okay that, that's the reason why this is the static noise margin uh, at this uh, uh, instance so this is nothing but uh, right margin of uh, the sram so if vn is too large then two stable states exist which will not allow the right operation as i said and don't forget that static noise margins are nothing they are, they are more conservative uh, they are they are actually much smaller than that than maybe the in the reality it it is made uh, such a way that we we are more cautious so that we will not end up being uh, faulty one right so it is more cautious the static noise margin because they assume the dc operation um, and also noise sources are uh, constant and access transistors are indefinitely on all the time and uh, bit lines remain at their full full precharged level this is this is all the things which are assumed so these can be relaxed to define larger so the dynamic noise margin uh, there is a term called dynamic noise margin and th that can be a little um, you know rela relaxed value and we can use it if it is a very very difficult design 
and also in modern technology notes the threshold voltage mismatch caused by random dopant fluctuation is a very uh, big problem right so uh, what happens is the threshold voltage will change and we have billions of these uh, transistors over there and the threshold voltage is changing and this will uh, create variations in noise margin we have seen right we have the we have seen that it will impact that uh, both the right margin, read margin and also the hold margin will be impacted through the threshold voltage. And if the threshold voltage goes uh, negative, if the threshold voltage um, falls below uh, what it was supposed to be, if it falls, if it is going negative, then the cell will not be operable. It will be definitely inoperable right so these kind of cases uh, this is not always in our hand right it is a process variation so um, this has to be um, verified so for the verification of these cases uh, these failures basically uh, we cannot go for brute force monte carlo simulation because it may need billions of simulations right so in order to solve this problem a well thought uh, monte carlo simulation has to be done which is with the probability of failure also should be accurately predicted so that's what the cell stability is this is a kind of a little advanced concept if you were not able to understand completely it is okay uh, but I hope you got some idea about what cell stability is in and how it is important for the design of SRAM cell. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in the next video and bye-bye.